Hello everybody. Welcome to Vaishayas. This is Pranay and uh, we are going to continue the Tamil Nadu history te- textbook series. And uh, please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel and please share it with your friends. And please reach us on WhatsApp uh, for any sort of details regarding the test series and other courses. So we are going to continue the chapter number 2. the late, uh, later vedic culture of uh, early india the chalcolithic megalithic iron age and vedic culture okay so we're going to continue the later vedic culture previously we have read about the chalcolithic period as well as the early vedic culture so we are going to read about the later vedic culture which was between 1000 bc and 600 bc the later vedic culture is dated between 1000 bc and 700 to 600 bc okay the painted graveware culture of iron age which has been identified by archaeologists at many excavation sites is associated with the later vedic age okay so the later vedic age is related to painted graveware culture okay this period witnesses political social economic complexity see till now in the prehistoric times it was the matter of survival okay slowly Uh, at the time of harappan phase it went into some sort of urbanization but still at that point of time there was no sort of political organization or political association okay by the early vedic period they started some sort of miniature economic and uh, political conditions okay there was some sort of kinship being formed but still there was no proper king okay there was no proper king there was no proper kingdom but as the time passed by and we entered the later vedic period slowly the king the head of the uh, the whole uh, kingdom started become very important okay we will see into it in the coming slides okay the later the later vedic period was composed after the rigveda samhitas the yajur veda and the atharva vedas were composed after the rigveda okay so after the rigveda the the later vedic period is considered basically okay in this period yajur sama and atharva vedas are composed so in uh, in the previous class we have studied from where did they enter where did the aryans entered and where were they getting settled now uh, the uh, evidence is show that they got extended towards a little southern and little towards the eastern side okay so from punjab to western uttar pradesh in ganga yamuna doab in the later vedic period okay the history of ancient india was thus marked the movement of cultures okay and interaction and battles among various groups for territories and resources it has been suggested that while the aryans migrated to the region of eastern part of the ganga valley the indo iranians okay migrated from region of iran to the region of punjab okay so what happened is the aryans moved from here towards this side and indo iranians started moving to this part okay from iran basically okay so you can see here the extension you see almost it's covering till here till here okay and till here so it it slowly started extending okay slowly tar- started extending and from iran people these people came and started settling here and these people started moving this side okay the later vedic text speak about the region of kuru panchala you might have heard and also we have discussed about in the last class also which falls in the indo gagantic divide and upper ganga valley the area mentioned as south eastern boundary of the aryans in rigveda is listed in aitreya brahmana okay aitreya brahmana is one of the books of the brahmana okay uh, what we have read uh, the samhitas then the brahmanas which had the commentaries uh, if you don't know please you know uh, uh discontinue this class go to the previous class and attend it and you know you will understand what were brahmanas what were samhitas and what were the vedas which were written okay as the midland which indicates the movement of aryans into ganga valley in the later vedic period perhaps this expansion was induced by the need for water and land resources fresh less occupied territories and population pressures since see they entered here okay slowly this got populated and also the resources started declining 
ओके एज सुन एज दि पॉप्युलेशन इंक्रीजेस दिस रिसोर्स स्टार्ट डिक्लाइनिंग सो ऑटोमेटिकली दी पीपल विल स्टार्ट सर्चिंग फॉर बेटर प्लेसेस ओके सिंस दे वर इन टू एग्रीकल्चर सिंस दे वर इन टू पैस्ट्रोलिज्म सो ऑटोमेटिकली दे वॉन्टेड मोर एंड मोर लैंड दे वॉन्टेड मोर एंड मोर वाटर फॉर द इरीगेशन ओके स्लो ऑटोमेटिकली दे विल स्टार्ट मूविंग ओके द कुरूस पांचालास वशास एंड उशेनिरास आर द ट्राइब्स ऑफ दिस पीरियड ओके रिफरेंसेस टू दिस सरस्वती एंड दृष्टावती रिवर्स अकर इन द लेटर वैदिक टेक्स ऑल्सो यू नीड टू रिमेंबर कुरूस पांचालास वशास उशिनारास सो दीज आर द ट्राइब्स ऑफ दैट पीरियड यू पी एस सी में आस्क अ सिंपल क्वेश्चन एट वॉट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम दीज वर दीज ट्राइब्स वर प्रेजेंट ओके Around 1000 BC, the Vedic Aryans moved towards Kosala region in eastern Uttar Pradesh and Videha in North Bihar. Okay, where the Vedic people encountered the local people, following Chalcolithic material culture. At that point of time, the Chalcolithic material culture was prevailing in the northern part of the Bihar and the eastern UP. Okay, so slowly the Vedic people moved, and you know there there was some sort of you know conflict or you know a mixture of the culture okay in the upper ganga valley the vedas acquired munda words okay see uh, here see these people started moving here the northern part of uh, bihar and you know the eastern part of up okay so this was the kuru dynasty basically the region of kosala and videha were the easternmost territories of the aryan expansion during this period by the end of the vedic period panchala and videha were aryanized so slowly the people started getting aryanized slowly those people also started getting the culture which these people were bringing okay the area be beyond this region in the east was seen as the alien territory okay in the atharva veda the people of anga and magadha were seen as enemies okay anga and magadha most probably the bihar part okay was considered as enemies okay similarly the pundras of bengal and andras were seen as outsiders okay and uh, which was written in the atreya brahmana okay this suggests that these regions were not influenced by aryan culture okay bengal as well as the andhra okay what we gather is that the process of aryanization gradually spread from northwest to southeast okay so we will see about the later vedic culture as well as what was the use of iron what was the importance of iron in the later vedic culture okay iron was one of the most important metal at that point of time okay it was called as shyama ayas shyama ayas or krishna ayas okay shyama krishna these are considered you know the darker color so automatically they were called as shyama ayas and the krishna ayas or the dark material okay iron is believed to have played an important role in conversion of the forests of the ganga valley into agriculture lands so they used a lot of iron axes you know axes and other kind of tools to clear off the forests basically this is what they wanted to say okay so these iron implementations of tools and weapons you know created them to uh, get into this forest and clear up the forest and make agricultural land over there okay those lands were fresh and you know untouched by humans previously so automatically it will be very fertile and obviously the ganga water you know bringing a lot of sediments okay by the end of vedic period the knowledge of iron had reached eastern uttar pradesh and videha okay earlier it was believed that iron originated around 700 bc but recent research dates the beginning of iron around 1200 bc or even earlier okay the early views gave excessive emphasis to iron to the colonization of the ganga valley okay what they say is iron gave uh, had its own importance okay these people started moving and because of the iron okay they had weapons sorry they had weapons proper tools okay these made with iron were pretty useful for them to acquire more and more land okay weapons will help you know to 
clear of the people tools will you know help uh, in uh, clearing the uh, land basically okay so settlements and territories with the intensification of agriculture the later uh, later vedic people led the formation of territorial units okay settled life leading to formation of territorial units the term janapada referring to territories found in the brahmanas dated the janapada word was not in rigveda slowly you know small clans small clans were there and now slowly these started becoming into some sort of kingdoms basically okay so the term janapada was used for such of a kind of explanation okay Th there are more than 1000 signs of painted graveyard culture in this area suggests that new settlements came up and the upper ganga valley was densely populated okay people lived either in mud brick houses or with wattland dwarf same some sort of perishable material they used to do uh, used for the houses basically okay the foundation for the towns must have emerged during the later vedic period okay so the start uh, they started the towns basically previously small kind of villages were there very few people and you know there was some sort of uh, uh, distinction between the people now uh, small towns started small kingdom started okay this period was of intense interaction the term nagara nagara okay what we say now nagar or some sort of a city kind of a thing okay referring to commercial quarters is found in the later vedic texts okay however large towns appeared only at the end of vedic period okay the sites of hastinapura and kausambi are considered proto urban okay somewhat similar to urban okay the material culture of this period shows more diversity and is an improvement over the early vedic period okay it can be surmised that the, there was surplus production to support various classes such as chief princes and priests so automatically due to the surplus production there will be some sort of economic growth and automatically there will be development happening okay so we will see about the political organization okay in the later uh, early vedic period tribal polities were there we read about it in the last class the king was elected by assemblies in the later vedic period the assemblies became less important and the power of king increased see in the previous class we have read you know the king was a just a nominated figure kind of a person in the early vedic period most of the decisions were taken by the sabha or the assemblies but now the king started becoming important he became uh, he started become powerful also okay the influence of the assembly called vidhata disappeared which we discussed while samiti and sabha continued in the period okay the development of large kingdoms reduced the power of the assemblies okay the rajan was the leader okay who led the army in the battle the concepts of samrat or samrajya developed and they suggest the increase in the power okay and ambition of the king samrat and samrajya started you know in this period itself the legitimization of kingship became important so now since previously uh, in the early early period a uh, king was just a nominal figure they used to just you know have somebody as a king uh, he was not actually king he was just called as a rajan who was you know who was taking care of the people but now raja become a prominent figure the king became a, a prominent figure and automatically since he is you know uh, uh, getting into these kind of things automatically the kingdom becomes important you know acquisition of kingdom becomes important and more or less as the acquisition of land and people becomes important automatically the power increases okay important with the performance of various sacrifices such as vajipay and rajasuya okay so these kings started doing this kind of vajipay and rajasuya rituals okay so they used a lot of rituals you know in the later vedic period a lot of rituals came into existence you will see in the coming slides the king developed more control over the territory people and resources okay purohita basically the priest 
okay which means one who places the king in the forefront okay so more or less he is assigning the king or he is making the king basically the purohita as per the definition he is the person who is assigning the kingship basically okay become uh, became important in the establishment of polity and kingship monarchy developed slowly you know uh, previously we saw like in the sabhas and all the people started uh, you know discussed and you know uh, uh, gave uh, you know certain sort of opinions uh, Uh, and the king used to act as per the opinions basically but now slowly the monarchy started developing the king became very powerful whatever the king says the people have to follow that kind of thing started appearing the rajan became the controller of the social order shrauta sacrifices you know shrauta sacrifices you need to remember this to achieve some sort of benefits were carried out to control the resources okay the kings presented cows horses chariots gold clothes and female slaves to the priest see as the purohita is doing the priest is doing all these things for the king okay automatically he will also become very much important the priest also becomes very much important the importance of the priest is increasing okay so automatically he will get a lot of uh, you know gifts and you know uh, payments from the king basically so he used to get a lot of cows horses chariots gold clothes and even female slaves okay the aitreya brahmana says that king have to provide around 1000 pieces of gold and cattle to the brahmana who anoints them okay thus the priest becomes important in the formation of polity and royalty okay the term such as rashtra to denote a territory rashtra is basically a territory rajya meaning sovereign power okay rajya means the sovereign power the king received voluntary or compulsory contribution called bali okay from the people okay we discussed in the previous class that there were some sort of uh you know voluntary or compulsory taxation kind of a system they used to go and work for the king okay those started become becoming tributes now the mahabharata offers clues to historical development and is suggestive of the power struggle to control the territories okay the ramayana too is suggestive of the aryan expansion and the encounters with the native people in the forest the territorial formations and development of lineages became stronger now okay lineages basically you know the ancestral line basically it became started uh, started becoming very strong okay during the later vedic period the development of state level political organizations started emerging okay after 500 bce and the later vedic society was therefore in the transition basically okay state level political organization started after 500 bce okay and later vedic period was therefore in the transition it was a transition phase several lineages became more territorial and settled in the later vedic period this is evidenced by the term janapada which we just discussed as we saw earlier okay the uh, mid first millennium bce had political organizations such as rajya and ganasangas and these institutions developed in the later vedic period okay the clans of bharata and purus combined to form the kurus okay and along with the panchalas they occupied the central part of ganga yamuna doab panchala territory was in the northwestern part of the up okay the kuru panchalas became one major ethnic group and hastinapur became their capital okay kuru panchalas capital was hastinapur okay the war between the kauravas and the pandavas okay was the theme of the mahabharata and both of them belong to the clan of kurus okay tradition say that hastinapur was flooded and the kuru clan moved to kausambi near alahabad okay sacrifices and rituals gained importance as we just discussed you know the ritual started become very important the priest became important the importance of rituals became very important okay the king became more independent rituals dominated kingship and this increased the power and influence the rajanyas and the brahmanas while distancing the king from the regular people okay the ashwamedha yaga was very important a horse was released 
okay the horse was released i will see i will show you in this see here they are using uh, they are doing some sort of uh, yagam there a horse is released if this horse and uh, a horse plus uh, a couple of you know uh, troops basically will be roaming okay this if the uh, horse is stopped by some other king this king will go and you know wage a war against that king who stopped the horse and if he wins you know uh, that territory will be acquired by this person itself this, this king itself if that horse is not stopped by a king that uh, that king will be under this king itself okay after this uh, horse returns back this horse uh, is sacrificed by the priest he will be killed more or less okay and a feast will be given okay involved letting a horse loose into areas where it moved freely this was an assertion that the authority of the king was recognized and a battle ensued when the horse was challenged we just discussed the vajipaya ritual involved a chariot race even now also even now also this vajipaya and rajasuya rituals are being done you can see in the news okay such innovative modes of rituals help to increase the power of the king okay the formation of social distinctions became prominent okay see uh, next we will see the social organization the social transformation in the later vedic period is much more clearly reflected in the references in the vedic texts the social divisions of varna became more established previously we saw the people started discriminating in only two parts like the aryans and non aryans or the dasas or dasyus slowly that became as per the occupation as per the necessity it started dividing into more okay teaching was seen the as the occupation of the brahmanas the wives of brahmanas and cows were given important status okay rajanya refers to kshatriyas okay and they were the warriors and rulers who received bali as tax okay now in this uh, you see there is a priest who is basically the brahmana then the kshatriya who is basically the warrior or the king family basically next will come the vaishya 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 is basically the traders traders and merchants and all these people after leaving all these people there came the last one the shudras who were the basically the servants they priest who helped the kshatriya vaish, uh, vaishyas they gave taxes Uh, you know uh, after trading and all that they used to pay the taxes to kshatriyas and shudras were there to help these people not help basically serve these people as servants okay striking changes took place in varna system there was an increase in the privileges of the two higher classes the kshatriyas and the brahmanas they started you know uh, becoming very important okay and because of the uh, you know uh, both were important right at that point of time both were considered important so automatically between them also they started uh, you know getting conflicted couple of people say the kshatriya was a bigger uh, varna and couple of people say the brahmana is the bigger varna okay the brahmanas and the kshatriyas at the cost of vaishyas and sudras vaishyas and sudras became very low these vaishyas were more or less for the tax okay more or less the tax and you know uh, this uh, any sort of trade and economic uh, purposes were done by the vaishyas and shudras were there as servants more or less okay in the pancha vimsha brahmana the kshatriya is placed first that's what we said okay in the pancha vimsha brahmana uh, brahmana in the book the pamsha vimsha brahmana in that book kshatriya is placed in the first position okay higher than the brahmana but in the satapata brahmana the brahmana is placed higher than the kshatriya so there was always a conflict between both of them okay in later vedic society the importance of purohita is stressed as mentioned in the vedic texts the kshatriyas challenged the brahmanical supremacy the brahmanas were there in the uh, since the starting itself like we are very much uh, sacred and we are very much important okay so we are very much supreme okay but kshatriyas as as these people were you know making the kingdoms making the path for the growth and all that they started assuming their own supremacy okay 
and exclusive uh, privilege of entering the ashramas ashramas there were four ashramas basically and this was only applicable to brahmans basically at that point of time okay the regulator four stage of uh, brahmacharya grihastha vanaprastha and sanyasa brahmacharya is basically the early age where you know they will be going uh, to these uh, rishi muni and they will learn from them and you know they will uh, become you know adults basically and grihastha when they will get married and you know uh, uh, give birth to uh, some sort of uh, uh, children and you know that uh, that kind of uh, stage vanaprastha is basically when he attains certain age he will just leave his family and he will uh, you know go to forest and you know start learning and uh, teaching the uh, smaller people and all that and the sanyasa is basically celibacy you know we will leave everything and he will just teach okay the outcome of this was the birth of jainism buddhism and ajivikam you know these kind of things made the people uh, you know to get into new religions where humanity humanity was considered much more important okay here the supremacy of uh, religion supremacy of some sort of varna supremacy of some sort of caste and these all you know made couple of people to uh, you know leave all these things and start some sort of new lifestyle or new religion okay the system of four varnas had taken deep root and become rigid in the course of time at this point of time only the casteism started spreading up okay uh, it became very much uh, integrated into the lifestyle of the people because of these casteism and religion you know and the distinctions between the people the differences between the people these jainism buddhism and this kind of uh, you know different religions and different lifestyle started prevailing okay the popularity of rituals helped the brahmanas to attain power automatically what the, uh, at that point of time kings had to do some sort of rituals for their uh, you know livelihood uh, not livelihood for their living basically or maybe for their winning and all but that ritual was done properly by the priest only so automatically priest became very much important okay brahmanas became important and the king supported them although they had conflicts with the rajanyas and the warrior nobles more or less these both stuff uh, brahmanas and kshatriyas automatically you know uh, suppress the vaishyas and uh, shudras they are gone vaishyas and shudras are already gone in the uh, timing but still these uh, both were uh, you know uh, together in making these kind of things basically they had their own internal conflicts but in you know uh, rituals and everything the king supported the brahmanas and brahmana supported the kings with the rituals basically the concept of dvija second born or twice born okay developed and the upanayana the sacred thread ceremony which we even a lot of people do okay was limited to the upper sections of the society this ceremony marked the initiation for the education so after this upanayana the guy who got that upanayana will start going to the school or whatever they call at that point of time and go and study okay the fourth varna and woman the shudras basically and women were denied this privilege okay so upanayana was limited to the first three classes only it, it does mean that okay and uh, gayatri mantra could not be recited by the shudras okay the king asserted his authority over the three varnas the aitreya brahmana refers to the brahmana as seeker of support okay he calls the brahmanas as the seeker of, uh, seeker of support and he could be removed by the king from his position okay so what does uh, it shows is basically as per the aitreya brahmana kshatriya comes first basically in this sense okay kshatriya has authority over the brahmin people also okay see here the brahmana is uh, something like this he is basically you know wise and all the kshatriya is basically a warrior okay he will be going for the fights and all vaishyas vaishyas are the uh, people who are basically uh, the traders and merchants and the shudras are basically the servant of the all uh, the all people basically certain craft group managed to attain 
higher status the ratakaras the chariot makers had the right to wear the sacred thread the upanayana thread okay vaishyas refer to common people okay they were involved in agriculture cattle breeding and artisans later they became traders okay vaishyas paid taxes to the kings so the income source you know uh, not considering the war booty remaining everything came from the vaishyas more or less the shudras used to work for free okay and the vaishyas paid the taxes some social groups were placed in ranking below the shudras also okay however cross varna marriages did happen at that point of time also okay inter varna marriages were happening at that point of time also the idea of gotra emerged in the later vedic period okay gotra literally meant cow pen cow pen is basically a fence kind of a thing where the cows will be there cows will be there so cows are limited to this fence itself this cow cannot come to this side so what does it mean is this uh, inside this pen whatever the cows are there they are considered as uh you know brothers and sisters in the same way the same gotra people are considered as brothers and sisters and they cannot marry okay so they are linked to the same ancestor okay inter gotra is allowed this uh, person is allowed to marry this person from different gotra this is that's the concept basically okay persons of the same gotra were considered as brothers and sisters and could not therefore inter marry okay several unilineal uh, descent groups existed with common ancestors okay family what was the family structure okay the household became more structured okay which means it became more organized okay the family was important social unit the family was patriarchal uh, what we you know read yesterday also it was patriarchal in the early vedic period also with patrilineal descent automatically the father becomes important okay after that you know uh, uh, getting a son is very important in a patrilineal descent also okay so automatically the family will continue through the son basically it does mean like that okay the relations within the family were hierarchical okay so automatically uh, you know as per the hierarchy the father is the greatest and then you know the son and in that way polygyny taking many wives was prevalent in the early vedic period we read about the polygamy now polygyny okay so it does mean you know automatically the value of the woman you know started getting deteriorated several household rituals were also developed for the welfare of the family the married man with his wife was the yajamana okay yajamana is the owner basically or the head of the family okay the concept of ashramas we read right brahmacharya grihastha and varnaprastha okay was not well established okay brahmacharya grihastha and varnaprastha was pretty you know uh, Uh, discussed but sanyasa was not properly developed by that time okay see brahmacharya is studying in grihastha they are you know having uh, getting married and having kids and all at vanaprastha he will leave the family and all the belongings you know all the richness luxury and he will go and you know uh, stay in forest and you know uh, live on arms basically and in sanyasa they will become rishis and they will you know start meditating and teaching others students and all okay what about the women okay the status of women declined we read also it started deteriorating as the society became more structured and patriarchal family became more important okay in the family the father was the head okay the father was the head the right of primogeniture primogeniture is basically the first child first son first child become very important okay whoever will be the first son will be considered as the king okay or the uh, the the uh, what do we call the head of the next generation okay though women had participated in rituals in the rigvedic period they were excluded in the later vedic period okay you need to understand women participated in the early vedic period but now in the later vedic period they were excluded automatically their importance is getting very low okay daughters are spoken as the source of trouble okay maybe 
you know letting them get married you know they have to take care till they get married and all that because of that they were considered as trouble at that point of time their work was to look after the cattle milking animals and fetching water okay economy what was the economical structure agriculture activities you know increased the satapata brahmana mentions rituals related to plowing okay undertaken by the kings this suggests the importance given to cultivation by the rulers okay plowing undertaken by the kings okay the kings used to take care of the plowing also okay not maybe not all the land but most of the land uh, you know under the king itself okay so it shows the cultivation uh, was very important was considered very important by the rulers and shift to agriculture to support the increasing population okay the god balarama is depicted with a plow so automatic world, what they say is uh you know whatever information uh, they have or whatever they consider at that point of time they will show through some or other way so this god balarama is depicted with a plow at that time okay you will see in the coming uh, slide okay the vedic people cultivated barley and rice and wheat wheat was the staple food of punjab region the vedic people began to use rice in ganga yamuna doab okay punjab region still they eat Uh, you know uh, wheat uh, roti and all that more than rice and uh, in the ganga yamuna area they eat more rice than wheat considerably okay the use of rice rather than wheat is noticed in the vedic rituals basically okay see this is god balarama having a you know plow kind of a thing in his hand so this is also an image which came later uh, you know this is not an image of the vedic period this came in the later period as per the uh, vedic text basically okay pastoralism pastoralism as usually you know early vedic period it was very important itself uh, other than the agriculture in this uh, time also it was considered very important okay and uh, cattle were considered sacred now also they are considered sacred they became part of exchange and redistribution started trading basically the offering of cattle as part of dakshina continued okay pastoralism supplemented agriculture and uh, next comes the craft production arts and craft proliferated during the later vedic period okay and specialization took deep roots specialization started increasing at this point of time specifically in the vedic, uh, early vedic period there were limited you know uh, with uh, the arts and crafts but in the later vedic period automatically some sort of specialization also started you know a uh, couple of things are taken care by specific people like maybe a blacksmith maybe uh, you know a goldsmith you know started they were having some sort of specialization in their own occupation evidences of iron work is noticed from 1200 bc metals such as copper tin gold bronze and lead are mentioned these metals were smelted and worked by specialized groups the copper objects were used for making weapons of war and hunting this kind of information is very important for the upsc okay uh, upsc will simply ask uh, like uh, tin was not known to the uh, later vedic people okay so uh, you have to you know uh, go through these uh, uh, these all information and you just need to have a rough idea like you know tin was known to them okay lead was known to them bronze was known to them automatically if they know bronze automatically they will know copper also okay uh, i guess like uh, in the previous question uh, harappan people uh, no iron this was some sort of question previously asked i guess so okay so actually harappan people don't know iron okay iron started in the later uh, part of the early vedic period basically okay weaving was undertaken by women okay weaving was also there so automatically quality of clothes and also started increasing leather work pottery and carpentry were well known terms such as kolala okay referring to potters kolala referring to potters okay and urna sutra referring to wool appear okay kolala is basically kolala is basically the potter and urna sutra is basically woolen cloth okay bow makers rope makers arrow makers hide dressers 
stone breakers, physicians, goldsmiths, astrologers, these all were specialized professions. Professions such as physicians, washermen, hunters, boatmen, astrologer and cook are mentioned. Okay, References to elephant are often found in the Atharva Veda along with the elephant keeper. Okay, The increase in references to such groups indicate a society in transformation. Okay, These info washermen, hunter, boatmen, automatically there starts a need basically. As the need Need increases, you know, demand also increases. A simple concept of uh, uh, what do we call uh, as the need increases, the demand increases, and the supply also started increases. A simple, uh, you know, economic concept. Okay, so automatically, when the people are increasing, so washing clothes, you know, the requirement of clothes, the metal products, you know, automatically starts increasing. Okay. The performers of Vedic sacrifices were also a type of service providers. The performers of Vedic sacrifices, basically. The priest, the helpers of the priest, these were also considered as one of the service providers. The priest played an important role in legitimizing the role of king through various rituals. Okay, Wealth was measured in terms of cattle and animal. There is mention of offering of 20 camels, 100 gold necklaces and 300 horses and 10,000 cows as Dakshina, basically to a priest. So, as the rituals are, you know, increasing, as the importance of rituals increasing, the priest also became important. What it is showing is, you know, there is some sort of fear in the people. Okay, there is some sort of fear in the people, like so and so if the ritual is done, so and so can happen. So and so thing can be acquired. Okay, because of that fear, the priest became very important. See uh, here, uh, this is a small uh, you know, yagam kind of a thing being happened, and you know, this is a pictorial representation. How it used to happen at that point of time, we don't know. Okay, it is just a pictorial representation, as per the you know uh, what do we call assumption, okay, or the interpretation what we read through the Rig Vedas. Okay? Trade and exchange. What kind of trade they had? The material culture found in archaeological sites reveal that movement of commodities and materials. The movement of commodities and materials. Specialized caravan traders existed. No evidence of coins. No evidence of currency. So what does it mean? They were still in the barter system at that point of time. Okay, The introduction of coins took place about 600 B.C. So, what kind of religion belief system? The later Vedic period, the Upper Ganga Doha was the center of the Aryan culture. This region is described as land of Kurupanchalas. The Vedic gods Agni and Indra lost their importance. The Agni, Indra, Varuna, these gods were very important in the early Vedic period. These uh, in uh, these gods were, you know, correlated with the nature basically the nature environment the, the agni was considered from fire fire was considered one of the medium to reach the gods basically okay but now in the later vedic period these lost their importance slowly prajapati started became important okay uh, prajapati was considered as the main deity okay rudra the god of rituals identified which Shiva became important. The Satapata Brahmana lists the names of Rudra as Pasunampati, Sarva, uh, Sarva Bhava and Bahikas. Okay? Vishnu was conceived as the protector of people. Okay? There is no reference to Vishnu's incarnation. So Vishnu's incarnations also came later after the completion of Vedic period or maybe even later. Okay? Each Varna had their own deity okay see this is prajapati uh, some sort of uh, you know pictorial representation i found basically uh, so he was the creator he was considered as the creator of the world or the universe okay he, he is also called as the brahma basically okay rituals rituals became important in the society as we read okay uh, rituals and sacrifices could solve many problems this this was the sole you know reason behind priest becoming very important okay so 
rituals and sacrifices could solve many problems okay the rituals became more complex required more resources and took longer time okay in the early vedic period comparatively they were not very complex like these and were very fast and now it became very much complex okay the demand uh, the indirectly reflects the demand for rituals and formation of elite groups who could spend more resource on the rituals and sacrifices the correct performance of rituals was stressed automatically brahmanas or uh, the brahman people or the priest were having their own importance because of this thing the correct performance of rituals because if he was not there so automatically the ritual may be done properly or not nobody knows okay so uh, as per this brahmana is becoming very very important now stress was laid on paying dakshina now see who is getting uh, uh, you know uh, reward basically numerous rituals were prescribed for solving all kind of day to day problems even now also even if you you know but don't study they will say like you know you will get a so and so rank if you do this some sort of yagam or this sort of uh, puja or something okay even now also uh, people are there who believe uh, you know in the, those kind of things okay so what it says is basically at that point of time these were created because of their own selfishnesses okay these kind of yagams and all started become very popular because of the fear and the selfishness uh, point okay the uh, resort to rituals and sacrifice as a solution for prob- uh, problems led to view that you know rituals becoming very important okay anything can be done through the rituals okay so automatically rituals Uh, if you do ritual so and so x y z ritual uh, you will get a so and so rank so automatically for that ritual you need so and so money right so that money is becoming important now okay see uh, this guy is doing some sort of ritual i got an image in the internet okay so the ideas in the upanishads argue against such a view in the upanishad there is an anti statement regarding this okay stress uh, the importance of realizing the atman or inner self okay as per the upanishads the atman or inner self is much more important than ritual it is said okay such degeneration of rituals and the material oriented nature of the priest created dissension and led to the development of heterodox faiths such as buddhism and the jainism okay philosophy the disciplines of philosophy literature science developed in this period various branches of learning such as literature grammar mathematics ethics astronomy developed at this point of time education was limited to males okay teacher pupil uh, relation was cultivated through person oriented training basically you heard about the gurukul form of education you know uh, they will do some seva to the guru and uh, the guru will give you the uh, wisdom and the teaching basically that sort of uh, thing was at, at that point of time the development of vedic texts and the importance given to the pronunciation grammar and oral transmission suggests training in utterances and memorization as part of the vedic system of education in the schools we will uh, you know read dog 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 that kind of uh, you know utterances they will read the shlokas aloud for you know continuously and they will start remembering it in their brains and they will start understanding them slowly so that kind of education system was there at that point of time you know there was no uh, written evidence we have got no written evidence okay so automatically the uh, the generations were you know taught in that way itself okay see uh, here you know the teacher is there the major person okay he is teaching his pupils and uh, you know one guy is uh, meditating basically here and these are students who are getting taught by the main person basically okay they will do all the seva or whatever it is okay they will uh, do the seva for their uh, teacher and the teacher will give them wisdom and they will teach them basically and and in the same way uh, the student also we will become uh, teacher after the 
uh, you know uh, the sanyasa basically at the point of time sanyasa he will you know uh, leave his family and start getting uh, you know getting into the forest and he will uh, sit and teach whatever he has uh, taught you know he has got uh, the information from the previous teacher he had he will you know pass it on to the next generation basically in the same way it started you know in a loop upanishads which means to sit nearby texts with the philosophical inquiries were composed during this period they were also referred to as the vedanta since they were attached as the last part of the vedic text so these are called as also vedanta okay vedanta means the end of the vedas okay they lay stress on knowledge and realization of self or atman and the brahman the supreme being meditation cycle of birth and death okay they convey the ideas of karma and good conduct self restraint mercy and generosity as virtues okay despite the ritual dominated aspects of vedic life some seeds were in pursuit of knowledge and virtuous conduct okay satyameva jayate is from the mundaka upanishad this has been asked in upsc previously from where satyameva jayate was extracted okay satyameva jayate is extracted from the mundaka upanishad mundaka upanishad the late vedic culture has evidences of music and fine arts okay music instruments such as lute flute drum okay these started you know from that point of time itself creativity started increasing okay with the development of cultivation and pastoralism different type of food and drinks made of grains milks and ghee and plants were consumed okay slowly they started cooking okay uh, cooking they previously also they used to do but now different types of food they started you know using uh, ghee milk and you know they started having you know delicious food evidences of the use of silk and ornaments of metal gold and copper is also found metal mirrors were also used mirrors were also used the archaeological sites have uncovered beads and ornaments and fabrication of glass beads okay was also developed in the part of later vedic period okay so that's all for today so this was the end of the chapter number 2 the complete vedic period and the chalcolithic period has been completed and uh, we will see uh, the number 3 uh, chapter number 3 in the next class we will start the chapter number 3 in the next class okay and uh, please like the video please comment how did you like it did you find it useful how was it and you know uh, please comment which will encourage us to put more and more videos please share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel to get regular updates okay and uh, you can reach us on whatsapp also to get any sort of information regarding any material any test series or any uh, video material or any sort of enquiry regarding upsc okay thank you and have a great day